All right. Well, this is a Switch 100 bulb, but clearly it's uh, in pieces. Um, that's the purpose of this video. Uh, tear down uh, analysis of what's inside a Switch 100 light bulb. Okay, so there's now two thermocouples in the bulb. One's on the surface of the bulb, and a hole's been drilled through the glass envelope, and I placed uh, a thermocouple near an LED. And what we'll do is look at the temperature rise from the uh, LED to the surface of the bulb. So here's where we can really see the strength of the switch approach. Uh, the temperature near the LED is about 74 degrees centigrade. And on the right-hand side, the meter there is reading the temperature at the surface of the bulb, about uh, 57 degrees, about a 17 degree rise. Uh, that's remarkably low, actually. And what that means is the LEDs are, of course, being kept at a nice uh, cool temperature. And that cool temperature will directly re uh, result in a longer life product. Okay, now the bowl's been uh, emptied of its uh, silicone material. Of course, we should expect really rapid rises of temperature near the LEDs. The reason you're seeing banding on the, the camera is because of the flicker of the bowl, I suspect. Uh, as we tear apart the electronics, we'll probably see they haven't uh, adequately filtered the uh, voltages to the LED, and they're ending up to be a uh, very, um, very, very strong uh, AC component. But here we can see, of course, the bulb now uh, rising dramatically in temperature, much beyond what it was uh, when it was uh, with the cooling fluid. I mean, it's just confirmation, of course, that the, the design approach that they're taking of using a cooling fluid is solid. I mean, there's no, no question that this is the innovative portion of this bulb. So here's the AC to DC converter. On the side here is the AC entering from the base, and then on the right-hand side, the DC that goes to the emitter array. Uh, this blue component's a capacitor, these two components down here are chokes, they perform an EMI filter. One thing that happens with switch switching regulators, they generate a lot of uh, electromagnetic energy, and what you don't want is that energy to be conducted back into the mains. Uh, it's a regulatory requirement uh, to prevent electronics uh, from interfering with communication systems, wireless communication. The white component here, of course, is a fuse. Uh, that's a safety requirement uh, to prevent... Um, the bulb from uh, going up into smoke should it short out. Um, the large toroid right here is of course a transformer. Uh, it looks like a nice sided power supply design. If I flip it over, uh, you can see a MOSFET here and then the associated switching regulator here. Uh, nothing too shocking about the design. Pretty straightforward. There's only one real big omission on it. You can't see a lot of filtering on the uh, DC side. And that what that means is that uh, the DC has a lot of uh, uh, pulsing that goes along with it. And you can see that it turns into flicker, of course, and uh, some people are very sensitive to that. Uh, they can really notice a bulb that flickers. Uh, we saw that also when uh, we tried taking a photograph of it, when we were doing those uh, teardown portions of the video, and the camera is recording those bands, basically, that's, that's flicker as well. Uh, it, it's something that um, is unfortunate, because it's very easy to avoid with an LED bulb, and that's one thing that LED bulbs can be good at. Uh, LEDs love to run on DC. Um, no filter capacitors, though, here, so... Uh, definitely a choice they probably made for reliability reasons. The filter capacitor is uh, one of the number one items to fail because of its high uh, temperature, uh, not liking high temperatures. Um, unfortunately, though, for a $65 bulb, uh, I was very much hoping for a flicker-free experience. Okay, real close look at the circuit board now. You can see a couple wires coming up to the, uh, the circuit board, which holds the LEDs. Uh, obviously, those must be uh, hand-soldered on. Uh, now, the uh, uh, circuit board, of course, is uh, an aluminum substrate with a, a flexible uh, circuit board on top. You can see that uh, when they bent it, the uh, solder mask uh, crazes a little bit, so they have a little bit of process problems there. And there's no fancy barcodes on this assembly, it's just simply uh, text for um, trying to track the revision, so there's no per unit uh, marking, so uh, from a process control viewpoint. Uh, not nearly as sophisticated as the Cree bulb. Okay, so uh, the middle rail has been peeled back and there's a metal cap and that's uh, was taken off the pair of pliers. And uh, there's a bladder in here. You can uh, compress it. It's made of obviously some sort of material like rubber and then below it it's just air of course. So I presume what happens here is that as the bulb gets warmer of course the silicone wants to expand and this must uh, then allow that to happen. Then as the bulb cools, it uh, this expands back, and that, that prevents uh, the formation of an air bubble inside the bulb.
Let's take a closer look at this piece. There's, of course, the bladder here. It's a casting here. Uh, there's a what appears to be machined part here with even machined screws, threads. There's a retainer ring clip coming down here. Uh, the bladder itself is held on by another piece of stamped metal which has a pentaloop screws. There's three of those. There's, of course, a circuit board here which is an intermediate carrier and it appears to have a conformal coat on it uh, to keep the liquid from running into electronics. Uh, what this all means, of course, is a lot of manufacturing steps, a lot of parts, uh, and it's hard to imagine that one could build um, anything that would be cost-effective if they continue to use so many components uh, in what essentially is a disposable consumer item. All right, well, uh, not much more I think I can divine from this bulb assembly. So it's quite interesting. I mean, clearly the uh, silicone uh, uh, surrounding the LEDs is resulting in a cooler temperature, and undoubtedly it's going to result in a high reliability assembly. You can see those switches paid a real penalty for that. Uh, they've got a really complicated mechanical assembly to keep the uh, silicone uh, where it needs to be. And undoubtedly that drives, of course, the assembly price uh, pretty high in this case of this bulb. So unless Switch can somehow get this uh, technology of liquid cooling and figure out how to do it in a much more cost-effective way, um, it's hard to imagine this is going to be a really commercially uh, successful approach for an LED bulb.